puts them in prime position to host as well. Well, and Corey, that is why they play the game, and we're gonna see it play out here. One of the most electric atmospheres in all of college volleyball is Holloway Gymnasium here in West Lafayette, Indiana, and they are in true form here tonight. The Boilermakers basketball team played on Big Ten Plus earlier this afternoon, so the crowd had a nice pregame to fire up to come over here and support the Boilermakers here in Holloway. Yeah, Purdue, uh, Purdue hoping that they didn't use up all their energy in that win over Marshall. A uh, lot of crossover between the paint crew and the block party, and uh, they'll, they'll, they'll need to bring it here tonight. USC is, well, they've seen every tough environment there is in college volleyball. They're not going to be cowed by anything. Yeah, the Big Ten Conference, the premier volleyball conference in college volleyball. To get through the Big Ten is to put your stamp on the season and say that you have done something, and the Purdue Boilermakers looking to get that top 25 victory here against the Trojans. The Boilermakers will start with the ball. Loisha Coyne will step up to the service line to send it away. The sophomore from right here in Lafayette, Indiana. Coyne averaging 3.18 sets, 3.18 kills per set here this season as she sends it away and we are underway here in West Lafayette. Hudson at the front of the net. Nice dig by the libero. USC keeping it alive. Hudson taps it over the Trojan block. And a huge swing and a finish. For Adanya Famwina for the first kill of the game for the Trojans. Really nice job recovering in the middle of that point for USC and staying alive to be able to get the big swing for number one. And now back to serve it for the Trojans, Tyra Ariel, the redshirt junior from Plano, Texas. Boilermakers play at Hudson over the, over the Trojan block. Batenhorst out of the back row and she finishes it. Ali Batenhorst, a name that you're going to hear a lot here this evening. The transfer from Nebraska, now doing things here in Los Angeles. You know, and she's had a huge impact for the Trojans here. 6'5", coming flying out of the back row. Darn near impossible to block, certainly with a solo. Batenhorst ranks 10th in the Big Ten and kills at 3.73 per set. And the block showing up there as Famuina. Able to stifle the Boilermakers there and put that one down. 3-0 early on for the Trojans. That whole point started on a great serve by Ariel. It, it moved mid-air, made uh, Shacoin play it nearly out of bounds, but had to play it. Ariel sends it away. Anderson setting Mortis Myers on the slide. Myers finds the floor, the first kill of the matchup for the Purdue Boilermakers. Great big swing there by Myers going cross court. Plenty of court to work with. Had the defense flowing one way and she went counter to that motion. Myers one of six seniors for the Boilermakers here this evening. The 6-3 middle block from Alliance, Ohio. And that one finished at the net by the Trojans. Madison Peach with her first kill of the matchup. Yeah, Peach kind of went, uh, went off speed there and caught the defense a little bit anticipatory at the block. Good choice at the net. Beach the 6'2 redshirt sophomore from San Carlos, California. So the Boilermakers see themselves down early. Hudson hit that one off the block, but USC able to keep it off the floor. And Chloe Chacoin just has to get it over. A free ball now for the Trojans. And another point there for USC. 5-1 here early on as they are have come off the bus dominant, Corey. The Boilermakers a little bit out of sorts in that point. Nice job getting fingertips by uh, Anyanwu on the block there in the middle just to, to take some speed off the Shakoin swing. Anyanwu a force for the Trojans in the middle. Raven Colvin on the slide, stuffed at the net by the combination of Famwina and Anyanwu. Yeah, the, the Boilermakers go back to the well with that slide attack, and Colvin was kind of drawing dead into that two block. 6-1 early on here in set number one, and Dave Shondell wants to take a timeout. We'll take a 60-second timeout and be back here on Big Ten Plus. 
the University of Southern California, we like to think big. We live for big moments, big goals, big inventions, big research. We embrace big stages. We relish big screens. We love riding big waves. We know our way around big games, too. Thanks to big names whose big journeys began with us. Now we're ready for the latest big chapter of our story. The Trojans in the Big Ten. Yep, we're thinking the same thing you are. It's going to be big. Every season, we give it all. We give our strength. We give our passion. We even give his passion. It's in our blood. And now, we can give that, too. This season, Abbott and Big Ten are pitting school against school in the largest blood donation competition of our lifetime to fight the largest blood shortage in a generation. Want your school to win? Give blood. Six to one early on here in set number one, and the USC Trojans have come off the bus swinging, hitting 571 currently with four kills. Being led by Odana Famwina. As the Trojans go searching for more. Hudson with her first kill of the matchup off the block. That's a name that we're, the Boilermakers are going to need to hear frequently here in this matchup, Eva Hudson. Second in the conference in kills, but leading the Purdue Boilermakers here this season. Five Six. swings for Hudson. And off the slide of finisher, favor on Yanwu with the hammer, seven to two now. A late block there from Colvin, you can see she didn't quite connect with Hudson, left that gap in the middle. Gray Gosnell back to serve for the Trojans. The grad transfer from Indiana sends it away. Hudson with the big swing, but Gosnell is able to keep it alive and at the net. Raven Colvin down the middle, but Gosnell is able to keep that one off the ground. Finished at the net, point Purdue, seven to three. Off the hands of Lizzie Carr. Yeah, Lizzie Carr got up there. She just came into the match for the Boilermakers, and she uh, she wanted to make no doubt about that one. Score is 7-3. to three. <laughs> Purdue with that last point. Chloe Chicoin keeps it up. That one sails long out of the car, hands of Carr, so 8-3 to three now. Trubent will be back to serve the libero for the Trojans. Trubent, the 5'8 five five junior. Chacoin down the line, tapped over. Joust at the net. Batenhorst played by Hudson, and that is not a good scene if you're the Purdue Boilermakers as Raven Colvin went down there after the joust at the net. Getting up, gonna try to walk it off here. Pretty gingerly on that, uh, looked like that right ankle maybe. She came down a little bit awkward and the referee, the up official immediately stopped the point. So we're gonna, most likely we're gonna replay on this point. Yeah, I'm not a certified lip reader, but it looked like when she was walking towards Dave Shondell, she was saying, it's my ankle. And she's trying to walk it off right now. Of course, uh, it looks like she's got active ankle braces on both ankles. I have to be honest with you, Corey. <laughs> I have not heard this place this silent ever. And there, we were in here earlier with nobody in here, and I, it still wasn't that quiet. Raven right. Colvin going down, but Raven Colvin with a heart of a warrior getting back up, going to stay in the game. I don't think you could force her out of this game right now. No, no. Final home match for her regular season as senior. She's been so important in this program the last four years. Drew Brent sends that one away. Hudson out of the back row into the tape. USC with the point nine three now. Boilermakers just seem like they've come out a little bit flat here this evening. Haven't really been able to get the crowd into it, which again, it's it's a huge factor getting the uh, the faithful here into it. But 
Colvin with the response there, finding the kill. First of the matchup for her, and it's now nine to four. That makes that ankle feel a little bit better when you're able to terminate on a point like that. Colvin now back to serve. Top 10 in the Big Ten in service aces this season, but not able to find that one as that one's into the net. The first service error for the Purdue Boilermakers. It's 10-4. And now she will rotate out as she typically does after serving. It'll be a good break for Colvin. She'll be able to go get a seat and uh, continue to work that ankle. So Mia Tuninga back to serve. A rocket. That one still a little bit too high. 10-5 now off the service error for the Trojans. Those, those serves always sound super impressive, but uh, there's, there's too much mustard on that thing. You, you said rocket, I was thinking a howitzer. And Tuninga, a three-year starter for the Trojans, 4,312 assists, 200 away. And the USC school record is, that one sails a little bit long out of the hands of the freshman, Ryan McAleer. So back-to-back -back service aces for the Purdue Boilermakers, and USC has the ball once again. Allie Batenhorst back to serve for USC. Batenhorst, the 6'5 grad transfer from Houston, Texas. Taylor Anderson sneaky with it, able to find the floor. Smart play there by Anderson, catch the defense while they're still setting up. A uh, little dump, kill, her first of the night. Boilers have made it through one complete rotation now. Chloe Shacoin back to serve for her second time. This matchup. Set for bait and horse. Nice dig there from Ali Hornung. Eva Hudson tooling it off the block of the Trojans. Back-to-back -back points for the Boilers. Hudson goes high off hands. We've seen a couple kills from her now where she's like, okay, if you're going to throw a big block at me and it's an effective block, uh, I'm going to try and use it as a tool to get the point. Anderson and Hudson, the only two Boilermakers hitting in positive numbers currently. And Hudson with the solo block at the net. Back-to-back -back kills for Eva Hudson, and the Boilers cut the Trojan lead to three. Purdue getting a little bit, a uh, little bit of momentum. Maybe they, they got some juice off of those back-to-back -back plays by Hudson. See the team trying to rally. Shaquan sends it away. Tooling it off the block is Adanya Famwina. Famwina now with three kills to lead all hitters. That was a great approach by Famwina. Just, again, going at the Purdue block, getting that deflection. Both of these teams, two of the better blocking teams in the Big Ten, they both average about uh, just under three blocks per set on the season. To Hudson. This time the Trojans are able to keep it up. A nice tap there. Shacoin out of the back row, a response. The Trojans keep it alive. Back and forth we go, Hudson. Eva Hudson with the finisher. Her third kill of the matchup, it is now 12-9. Both sides kept that point alive until the Boilermakers were able to get something in system. It was a free ball over for USC and Hudson made them pay her fourth kill of the night. Senior from New Albany, Indiana, Allie Hornung back to serve it away. And she is treated with a service ace. The first of the matchup for the Boilers as they cut the lead to two. Hornung, another one of those seniors, like you said, playing her final home match here on Beelan Court. Hornung recently, Hornung recently recorded her thousandth dig versus Penn State. The 21st Boilermaker in history to hit or have a thousand assists. Hornung also joins her sister, Marissa, who had a thousand here as well. And the Boilers finish that one off. 12 to 11 now as the Boilers start to pick up some steam. What a play defensively for Purdue. A couple fantastic digs on that to keep the team in the point. And then Colvin able to terminate at the net. And that will draw a timeout from Brad Keller as USC wants to talk about it. It's 12 to 11 here in set number one. We'll be back here.
Out of the timeout, the Purdue Boilermakers in the midst of a 3-0 scoring run, looking to tie this one up here at 12. Allie Hornung sends it away. Stuffed at the net by Raven Colvin. And we're knotted up at 12. Back-to-back -back points there for Colvin. Emphatic ones at the net to get the Boilermakers back. Even a 4-0 run for Purdue. Hornung with the hot hand, sending it away as that one sails a little bit. Second service error of the matchup for the Boilers. 13 to 12 now as USC regains control. Megan Verbeese back to serve, the 5'6 junior for Manhattan Beach, California. Raven Colvin on the slide and gets the kill. Colvin's third of the matchup. That, that ankle looks like it's feeling a little bit better. Yeah, it is, uh, no doubt. She's gotten a couple blocks, a couple kills since the injury. Now Taylor Anderson back to serve, the 6'1 sophomore from San Antonio, Texas. Trojans keep that alive, a free ball for the Boilers. Anderson down the line to Hudson. Trojans able to keep it up off the hands of Hudson. And then a massive swing on the outside from Famwina again, her third of the matchup. Bamwina also with one dig and two blocks. Will rotate out of the game. The Trojans hold a one point advantage now. As Gosnell sends that one away. Boiler is not able to play it, a free ball. There was some confusion at the front of the net there from Purdue. Yeah, it was a great serve. Short, it threw everything off kilter. When you're running an offensive play, you have to go where you have to go, and, and you're not necessarily paying attention to where the ball's going. That's what happened there to Purdue. It goes into the net, and then no one was there to play it. An easy transition for the Trojans in their first year in the Big Ten, and with a couple of Big Ten players on their roster, Hudson's able to finish that one off. Her fourth kill of the matchup. 15 to 14. Nice play there by Hudson, taking advantage of the overpass. Really a, an overpass on a dig because Carr's first swing was so heavy as well. Great wide set there to Batenhorst. Brilliant play called there by Tuaninga. Another tough serve by the Trojans. Trubent, an ace for USC, the libero. Her first ace of the night. Shacoin pulling that off the block of the Trojans. Chloe Shacoin's first kill of the matchup. Important to get that side out there. Trubin's tough on serve. She puts a tough ball in play. And Shacoin able to get her out of that rotation. Now uh, Colvin will be back to serve. Now Raven Colvin back to serve. Boilermakers behind her doing a Raven Brothers three-point pose. Spider-Man. Batenhorst taps it over. Hudson to Shacoin. Colvin keeps it alive. Nice dig there from the libero. Batenhorst again. Actually, they're going to say Batenhorst with a lift. So the Boilers get the point. Purdue lucky that Lizzie Carr is six foot five on that play. She needed every inch of that to take. Uh, Taylor Anderson set to her was a little bit high. Carr kept it in play, and the Boilermakers get the point. So Colvin behind the service line again. Colvin keeps it up. Anderson to Shacoin. Kept alive in the back. That one sent sky high and a free ball now for the Trojans. Set for Batenhorse. And she splits the def defense and finds the floor. Third kill of the matchup for Allie Batenhorse. She looks really good getting those balls. 
at the pin. The Boilermakers not running any sort of special block at Baton Horse. That may be an adjustment that uh, the Boilermakers make defensively here. They can't let her keep swinging in system. No, they cannot as Baton Horse is starting to heat up here. 18 kills against Oregon. To Aninga sends it away. That one sails wide. Another service error for the Trojans, their second. Yeah, to Aninga again putting every ounce of energy she has into that serve. It's lethal if you can keep it in, in between the wide lines. Otherwise, it's 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 pretty costly. And that ball moves left to right. Usually it just goes forward, and that one moves left to right as it's going forward. What a dig from Hudson. Chacoin somehow saves it. I'm not sure what the call is there. Is They're calling a... So we take another look here. Chacoin leaps up, saves the ball back, doesn't touch the net, and that's what Coach Dave Shondell is saying. Uh, I, I believe a back row attack is the official call because they're going to rule that that ball went over the net. It went over out of bounds, incidentally. Uh... Shacoin did everything she could to keep it in play, and that's that's what the confusion is here. Both Chloe Shacoin and Dave Shondell are trying to plead the case, but both are just going to take the decision from the line judge and move forward. 1917 USC here in set number one. Now Ali Batenhorst to send it away. Anderson back to Shacoin. Chloe Shacoin finds the floor, her second kill of the matchup. No debate on that one, exactly how you want it to be. Shacoin in system, and she's able to find that zone in the middle of the court. Shacoin to serve now. Two kills on six attempts, hitting 333 here in set number one. Batenhorst out of the back row, and she is cash money. Her fifth kill of the matchup, 20 to 18 now, USC. That's the second time we've seen her come flying in out of the back. That time they were in a screen up front with a middle, which hit Batenhorst. You didn't see her until she was making contact on that ball. Yeah, you'll, you'll only see her when it's too late. Now USC sends it away. Ariel with the serve. On the slide to Myers. Mortis Myers, her second kill of the matchup, 20 to 19. A hotly contested set number one. Colvin rotates back in. Hornung sends it away. A block at the net. A triple block, if you will, from the Boilermakers, and we're tied at 20. Yeah, they ran three at Famuena there, as she has been so good here tonight. Hudson, Colvin, and Anderson put up the wall. Have to, have to feel respectful, though, as that one misses from Hornung there. Fourth service error for the Boilermakers here in set number one, but back to Danya Famuena. The, that has to be a respect thing, though. I mean, she's hitting the ball so well and so hard that you got to add another defender at the net for her. No doubt. No doubt about that. Anderson sets Hudson. Stuffed at the net. Another block from Anwanyu and from Wina. Third block of the match for the Trojans. It feels like they've got a lot more because they've all been pretty critical. It almost seems like Purdue kind of climbs back into it and they're right there in the title one point away and then the block of the Trojans shows up again. Hudson with the tap over the net. Anderson keeps it alive. Back to Hudson. Anderson sneaky again and finds the floor, her second kill of the matchup, 22-21. This is something Taylor Anderson's gotten a lot more aggressive with this season, picking out her spots and taking advantage of the defense still coming together. Now Anderson back to serve the Boilers, trying to knot things up at 22. Tuininga tried to go sneaky. But the Boilers were ready. Batenhorst out of the back row, she taps it over. To Hudson. Eva Hudson. Her fifth kill of the matchup, we're knotted up at 22. Huge swing there by Hudson. 
Nice play at the net by Carr on that bait and horse back row attack. Great sequence for the Boilermakers. Boilermakers looking to take the lead here, 22-22. Boilers able to keep that one up. Back to Hudson. Hornung keeps it alive. Hornung just has to get it over. Stuffed at the net, USC keeps it up. Free ball for Purdue. A dent in the floor. Raven Colvin says have some, 23-22. Purdue takes the lead. What a great point. It's a shame to see either team lose that point. They were both in it. Fighting tooth and nail to get it, and Colvin just pounds a hole in the floor. That's the energy the Boilermakers were looking for. They take the one-point advantage as Brad Keller takes the timeout. We step away for 60 seconds here on Big Ten Plus. Purdue in the midst of a 3-0 scoring run, taking their first lead of set number one. Stuffed at the net, Raven Coven with the block. 24-22 as Purdue has come all of the way back, looking to claim set number one. Four kills, three blocks for Colvin here, and the Boilermakers, while well, they come alive when it matters, two set points. A senior night performance for Colvin. See if the Boilers can finish it off, a joust. Into the net is called, and Purdue comes all the way back to get the 25-22 set number one victory. Huge run there by the Boilermakers, a 5-0 run to end that set. They did it when it mattered. These sets are one in the 20s, and uh, uh, Purdue comes up big. Big time players make big time plays in big time moments, and Raven Colvin, the senior, did it just there. Purdue wins set number one. We step away. We'll be back with set number two on Big Ten Plus. And they needed every bit of it, Craig. Yeah, and it was, it, you know, the tale of two, two uh, sets, if you will. In the first half, the Boilers struggled. Raven Colvin gets injured or gets hurt at the net. And then the way that she was able to come in and finish and the way the Boilermakers were able to finish off as a team that set number one was impressive. It sure was. Bait and Horse will get things going for the Trojans here in set two. Tapped over. Somehow kept off the floor by the Trojans. Boilers try to put it down here. Back to Hudson. The Trojans with the triple block and that one. They're actually going to call a net violation on USC, and uh, now their coaching staff not real pleased. Great pancake dig on that play to keep the point alive, but it ends up going to Purdue. Yeah, USC uh, uh, taking it back, if you will. You take another look at this one here, the block at the net. We'll see. I mean, I, I see the net moving there. I'm not quite sure. It's baiting horse out of the back row. Down the line to Hudson. Hudson taps it over the block. Slam and finish at the net. Raven Colvin continuing to play well here in set number two. Colvin kind of hung up in the air because Anderson's set was a bit high. Colvin able to reach up. She found, I don't know, she's got longer nails tonight or what? She was able to get just enough of that ball. That one set down the line. A rocket off the hands. But Danya Famwina, Famwina with her fourth kill of the matchup, go along with two digs and two blocks. But man, Corey, the ball just flies out of her hands. She's so much fun to watch. Famwina has all the swings, and we've seen most of them here tonight. And that one is let go by McAleer, but it finds the floor. So the second service ace of the matchup for the USC Trojans. 
Yeah, late call on that by the freshman McAleer. That will happen sometimes. You're asked to do a lot in a very quick time frame back there on the back row. Tyra Ariel sends it away. Hudson taps it over the block. If Amwina's waiting, that one was touched. So point in USC, three to two now. Good response here by the Trojans in set two. Trojans were in control all of set number one, and the Boilers came steaming back. Trojans trying to regain some of that momentum here in set number two. Baton Horse out of the back row. Return to sender. Raven Colvin at the net. See that Batonhurst swing out of the back row. Didn't quite have all the juice on it that she normally does, but uh, that might be partly because of that pretty block. Tied up at three. Five blocks for the Boilermakers. As that one is finished off as Hudson couldn't keep it off the ground. Four Art to three now. Great quick set there by Tuaniga to go to the middle to Onyanwu. Back to serve is Verbeest. Oilers get it back. Hudson ricocheting it off a couple of Trojan hands. Able to find the floor as Hudson gets her seventh kill of the matchup to lead all hitters. Got that deflection at the net. That's all she needed. Hudson hitting 208 tonight with a dig in three blocks. And now Hudson will send it away from behind the service line. Add a service ace to the tally. Five to four now Purdue after the ace from Eva Hudson. Well, we told you in the open of the show tonight that Eva Hudson, a semifinalist for National Player of the Year, uh, her stats stack up against anyone's across the country. It's going to be an interesting race. Chicoin able to get her hands on it. What a hammer again from Famuina on the outside. One came out of her hand so quickly, had to, had to wait and see. Where are they going to rule this one? Yeah. It's, like a, it's a blur. Now Greg Gosnell back to serve. Gosnell with two digs tonight. Nice job by the libero. True Brent to keep it up. Anderson to Hudson out of the back row. Hudson off the tape, and Eva Hudson's good. Eighth kill of the matchup. Boilers lead 6-5. Heck of an effort there by Verbeest as she had to change direction on this dig attempt. Almost got to it, but Hudson with her eighth kill. Now Raven Colvin back to serve. Colvin sends it away. Set for Batenhorst. Nice job by Hudson to keep it up. Lizzie Carr not able to keep that one off the ground, and USC gets the point off the block. Good block there by USC. They catch a break in that uh, Carr's not able to make herself invisible. That ball just deflects off of her as it was going out of bounds. Yeah, tough break there as Carr wasn't able to get it over the net as that one went off of the tape to the ground. Kyla Trubent sends it away. Myers has it put back into her lap by a combination of Baton Horse and Ariel. 7-6 now, USC. USC hitting 209 as a team, siding out at 58%. Tisha Coyne. Tap. Pancake dig by Horn on keeping it off the ground. Back to Baton Horse. Chacoin keeps it up. Hudson out of the back row. Somehow USC keeps it up. Back and forth we go. Boilers keep it up. Again, Baton Horse. Hornon keeps it alive. Carr. Gosnell now back to Baton Horse. And USC gets the point after a long rally. 
What a play by both teams. Tell you what, Craig, you're lucky in a long homestand if you see a point like that. We've seen two of them tonight. Uh, the Boilermakers got the first one. USC perseveres for that one. A true testament to both of these teams and how much do you want it? Eight to six now, USC leads. True bent to Shacoin. On the island of Misfit Toys as that one finds the floor. Who's gonna get it? No one is. The Boilers get the kill. USC, the last couple attacks to Shacoin have run the three block at her. And when you do that, you're taking away defensive options behind the block. They've only got three bodies to cover the rest of the court. Sneaky from Tuaninga. She puts it down, her first kill of the matchup to go along with 15 assists. Tuaninga, the 5'9 setter, senior from Long Beach, California, modern day high school. Transfer from Long Beach State. Sends it away. Lourdes Myers stuffed on the slide. 10 7 now as that USC block starts to come alive. They're sixth of the night, and we mentioned earlier that uh, these are two of the best blocking teams in the Big Ten. They're actually third and fourth coming in. If you're going to run straight at the block, you're going to pay the price. Not only their sixth block of the night, but third from Ali Batenhorst as Chloe Shacoin tools that off the block for her fourth kill of the matchup. One thing that's been fun to watch here tonight is because both teams are good at the block, you've got to do some different stuff offensively. You've got to vary your attack. Purdue's probably been going at Eva Hudson a little bit too much, so you'll see Shacoin maybe get Lourdes Myers involved. Back to Baton Horse. Stuffed at the net. The Boilermakers respond with a block of their own. They're sixth of the matchup. 10-9 now. And there, Baton Horse kind of took the, uh, took the routine, paid the price. And Eva Hudson now with four blocks herself to go along with eight kills. Seems like a, a, a battle between Baton Horse and Hudson here tonight. The coin like keeps it alive, and Hornung just has to get it over. Gosnell comes up. Some confusion between the Boilermakers, and that one finds the floor 11 to 9. That's absolutely what happened. And Ariel able to get that ball over, and then Anderson just couldn't get around Myers to get to that ball. Kind of looked like Anderson was expecting more on than getting the ball up, and it just didn't go as high yep. as she wanted it to. So USC will take advantage, a two-point advantage. Kept alive. Anderson with the block at the net. The seventh block of the night for the Purdue Boilermakers. Taylor Anderson second. Six foot one setter for the Boilermakers, just a sophomore, and she's a great setter, but, but a real strength of her game is that block. Yeah, and I, I talked about this on, a, on, on another broadcast, but it's tough when you're getting blocked at the net. Like right there, Raven Colvin, the eighth block of the night for the Boilermakers. The fifth, repeat, the fifth for Raven Colvin here tonight. We're 11-11 in set two, and it is seven blocks to six so far. And somebody's gonna get away with a victory here tonight, but also some numbers are gonna be padded as well. They're gonna have to update the Big Ten website. Nice dig out of the back row there from the libero. And Batenhorst, let's go, she says, as she finds the floor, 12-11. And the defense just kind of opened up in front of her. She had the entire middle of the court to work with there. Yeah, and that's, uh, I mean, that, that has to feel good for Batenhorst to see the Red Sea part and there's nowhere to go. Anderson to Colvin, who takes a little bit off of that one, but it was dug up. Free ball, though, for the Boilers. Taylor Anderson one more time. The third time here this matchup, Taylor Anderson with that sneaky set at the net and finding the floor. Yeah, three for three on those dumps for Anderson. Great placement. She's not just going to the middle. She's not taking the easy ball. That one was on the line. Taylor Anderson always with a smile on her face, one of the happiest players I've seen here. A big swing on the outside from Famwina. 
And the Boilers weren't able to play that one, 13 to 12 with Famuina getting her fifth kill of the matchup. Excuse me, sixth kill of the matchup to go along with four digs and two blocks. Six kills on just 14 swings. She's not getting a lot of volume, but she is taking advantage of her opportunities. Anderson sets Hudson, has to double take, able to ball over. Shacoin just has to get her hands up, but keeps the ball alive. Hudson tips it over. USC is calling for the lift. Baden Horse sails that one long, out of play, 13 to 13 now. We might actually have a challenge. So there was a rule change in college volleyball this year. They're, they de-emphasized calling uh, two hits if the ball doesn't go over the net. So you can, you can hit a two-hit ball as long as you're just passing it to a teammate. What well, USC is contending, the coaches all came off the bench at the exact same time that Eva's, Eva Hudson's contact there should have been ruled two hits, especially since it was an attack. It was aimed at the back line for USC. So they're challenging to see if that should have been two hits called on Hudson, which would have been a point for the Trojans. Well, and, and on that last shot, you could see that the line judge hold up the, the two fingers saying that that's what the, the challenge was going to be for USC. So we'll take a look at this one here. That's tough. So the, 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 the hands have to hit the ball simultaneously. You can see it looks like her left hand might have had a little bit more of the ball than the right did. So Brad Keller was correct. And that one was a quick reversal. So USC getting the point. They now lead Purdue 14 to 12 after the reversal. A good challenge there from Brad Keller. Can't blame the officials. That ball also caught tape. It made it look pretty funky coming out of her hands. It's easy to miss. Great challenge. That's the benefit of having replays. You can take another look, but Raven Colvin on the slide, finishing that one off. Her sixth kill of the matchup, she's hitting over 500. Yeah, the benefit of having replays, especially when they're quick. I love what, yo, yes, we obviously saw that. Change the call. If you don't obviously see it, don't change the call. Uh, and right being the goal. Yep, or correct being the goal. That one it tooled off the block of the Boilers for Famuina. Famuina now with seven kills. The Trojans playing well here this evening, looking to get set number two, ahead by two right now. Hudson keeps that one up out of the back row. Shacoin. Boilers able to play it. Hudson now out of the back row. Kept alive by Trubent. To Batenhorst. Anderson right there. Somehow kept alive, but I'm going to say it was hit two hits. So point USC 16-13. Also want to clarify, Purdue didn't take a timeout. That last break was a media timeout, so both teams still with two timeouts here in set number two. We just wanted to clarify that. You mentioned, we mentioned the uh, USC frequent flyer miles. They've done a heck of a job on the East Coast. They've only dropped one set on their three East Coast trips, that, or not one match on their East Coast trips this year. And USC, all business on road trips as Colvin taps that one over. Colvin, excellent here this evening. Her seventh kill of the matchup to go along with five blocks. 16-14 now. As Colvin, after the kill, back to serve. Tuaninga plays it. Joust at the net, won by the Trojans and Allie Batenhorst. Great move by Batenhorst. Took advantage of the Purdue aggressiveness on that block and just, just tooled it. Nine kills, five digs, and three blocks for Batenhorst. She leads all hitters now. That's really filling up the sheet right there. Anderson to Myers. Hornung just has to get her hands up. Kenna Woolard taps it over. Hornung to Hudson out of the back row. Somehow kept alive, but 
not going to make its way over the net. Another kill for Eva Hudson, 17 to 15. I like that on that point. USC knew if another contact would have been a fourth contact. So don't even bother. Just let the ball go begging. And you see it right here, tapped over. One, two, three, and yeah, we'll just yeah. let that one go. <laughs> Tuning into Batenhorst again. Batenhorst tooling it off the block of the Boilermakers. She's the first hitter in double digit kills, her 10th of the matchup. Boy, Batenhurst. Batenhorst and uh, Hudson are really gobbling up all the opportunities here. That was Allie Batenhorst's 29th attack. Hudson's got 32. Taylor Anderson one more time, sneaky no look kill. Her fourth of the matchup. That was dirty. That was the dirtiest that we've seen here tonight. And she goes up and just backhands it around the block. They were expecting it. They threw a two block at the center, and she still beat it. And she went the other way. The no look kill for Anderson. Boilers down by two. Anderson with the block at the net. Should have been four hits there. It's, the ball's still in play. And that one tooled off the block by Eva Hudson. Hudson with her ninth kill of the matchup. So we're going to actually get a challenge here from Coach Keller on the touch, which is interesting because I'm pretty sure if that point had gone to USC's way, Coach Shondell would have challenged the four hits. So I wonder if, if Keller gets the overturn here, can Shondell then challenge the original four hits? Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. Again, why I don't understand how they can't look at the four hits originally because that's, that's the call that started this whole thing. And that's the interesting thing. They can if they choose to. That is at the discretion of the official if they look at the entire point or the finish of the point. And uh, we've actually seen that bear its, bear its head as we take another look here at the touch specifically. You're looking for movement of fingers. If it caught Batenhorst's fingers and all, it looks like it's a right thumb. That's the best look I think we've got. That doesn't look like it hits her hands it at all. It does not. That looks like it's well above her hands. Rotation so. of the ball didn't seem to change. We wait for the call here. Ball is out of bounds. And now Coach Shondell's calling the down official over to talk through, uh, I would imagine, the potential for four hits and if he can challenge that. So as it stands right now, it's 1916 USC after the call was challenged. So now Dave Shondell pulls out his challenge card and kind of cued that up for us, Corey. You know, once in a while, uh, uh, a blind squirrel finds a nut, right? Uh, it's, it's such a weird point where both teams feel like they were wronged. USC was correct. We'll see if Purdue is as well. So I believe what Purdue is challenging now is on the previous play, not the current one that was just challenged, but the previous play to that, that USC touched the ball four times. It wasn't called at the time, and the play continued, which then led to the play that you just saw with the touch of the net. It also led to sporadically dozens of people in the stands yelling, four, four hits, and, and holding up their fingers. So an interesting, it's 1916 right now, as it stands with the overturn on the touch. Purdue wins this, it would go back to 1817. So we'll wait and see there, the Purdue Boilermakers and the USC Trojans getting an extra time out here, getting a, a little breather here. I mean, we're gonna get a breath ourselves. I mean, there's been up and down action here in sets one and two. This is a, a big call here as we are midway through set two. So there's one. There's two. It really, it kind of comes down to did Tuaniga contact that ball. If she did contact the ball after the very first touch, it would have been four on that free ball over. But we couldn't really tell from that angle if Tuaniga made contact on that ball. So that's really what we've got, and the call is going to stay with USC inconclusive. 
This refereeing crew is on it tonight. They are. They knew it before we did. There, there was no touch there. We saw that angle. So 19-16 after the challenges from both teams as USC gets the wins the challenge, gets the point. They lead by three. See Allie Batenhorst there getting ready to send it away for the Trojans as they try to tie this one up at one. The Boilers won set number one, 25-22. Don't forget, USC was up 22-20 in that set before Purdue reeled off five straight to end it. Set to Hudson. Nice dig by the libero. Back to Hudson. Not that time, Eva Hudson finishes it off. Her 10th kill of the matchup, 19-17 USC. Free ball over from USC was killer on that. It allowed Purdue to run a good set. Hornung sends it away to Ingo. Nice dig there by McAleer. Back to Hudson. Hudson off some fingers, and that one's good. Eva Hudson with her 11th kill of the matchup. She was headhunting you on that one, Craig. I know. I, I had to get my hand up. I'm blocking here, calling it. Man, it's... Couldn't see it on the broadcast, but my partner just about had his headset taken off by that ball. Almost got a buzz cut here. 18-19 is that one. There's a kill for the Trojans, 20 to 18. A great response after the Boilers had back-to-back -back points. Tyra Ariel with the kill. Another one for her. That's her third tonight. Excuse me, her second tonight. Second from Ariel hitting 111. Also has a service ace, two digs. Hudson off the top of the Trojan block. Tuning it down the line. Bumwina took a little bit off of that one, wasn't able to put it down. Hudson taps. Tuninga keeps it up. Free ball for the Boilers. Anderson back to Colvin. Tuninga somehow keeps it alive off the hands of Ali Batenhorst. And the Trojans will not go away. 21-18. Some great play there. There was a couple of times there that, was, that ball looked like it was going to hit the floor, but the Trojans they absolutely did. So 20, and then you see right there at the end, and I think this might be one of the reasons for the Purdue timeout, Shaquan and McAleer kind of came together as they both dove for that ball. A three-point lead for USC and, uh, and a couple bodies shaken up. Uh, good timeout here by the Boilermakers. So 21-18, to 18, Purdue takes the timeout. We step away for 60 seconds. We're on Big Ten Plus. Play Oregon, USC, and Washington to close it out. As we said, Washington is a common opponent amongst these two. USC finishes against Iowa. Raven Colvin. Everyone was surprised except for number seven. As Colvin puts that one down, her eighth kill of the matchup. Just how she drew it up, I'm sure. She gives a little shake of the head like she's going to hear about that one from the teammates later. Little tap, 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 Rue, and able to find the floor. See if the Boilers can go back to back here. 21 19 to Aninga. Off the hands of Anderson. And Peach with the kill. Peach's second of, excuse me, third of the matchup, 22 19. You mentioned the Boilermakers need to see if they can go two in a row. They need to string a couple together here. USC is happy to, to play the side out game at this point. Well, you said in set number one, Purdue is down 22-20, now down 22-19. We'll see if the Boilers can respond. And respond they do out of the hands of their All-American, Eva Hudson. Hudson, her 12th kill of the night on 39 swings. Three digs, four blocks. This is usually the point of the matchup where Hudson starts coming alive. Elevation there from the middle as Favor Anyanwu elevated it seemed to just float in the air and right at the end just tapped it over. Just the, the, the lightest of touches there from Anyanwu. Beautiful choice to make there to get the side out or to get the point. Anyanwu with four kills and four blocks this evening. 23 20 here in set number two. Tuninga dances to the sideline on the rotation. Smiles all around for the Trojans here in set two. 
Anderson to Colvin again. And Raven Colvin with the tap, finding the range. Colvin's ninth kill of the matchup, hitting near 600. She returned the favor on that light touch. Now Colvin will head back behind the service line. Looking for that first service ace of the evening. And it, looking for it, and it is found. Raven Colvin with her first service ace of the evening. 23-22, and that draws a timeout from USC head coach Brad Keller. We step away for 60 seconds. Much of the same here in set number two as we saw in set number one. Exciting volleyball here on Big Ten Plus. Big Ten. Baton Horse with the finisher, her 11th kill of the matchup, and the Trojans will see set point here in set number two. Good swing there about Baton Horse. It's been a while since we've called her name. Got to get her more involved for sure, and the Trojans do that coming out of the timeout. Perfect call at the perfect time. Set point number one. So Gala Truvent from Libero back to send it away here on set point for the Trojans. Drew Bint has 17 digs here this evening as that one sails wide. Service error number three for the Trojans and it couldn't have come at a worse time. 24-23 now as the Boilers look to climb back. Tough break there by Drew Bint. That's her second of the night. So set point number two. Baton Horse, kept alive by Hudson out of the back row to Shacoin. Hornung keeps it up, back to Shacoin. And Chloe Shacoin tools that one off the block of the Trojans for her fifth kill of the matchup, and we're knotted up at 24. Once again, the Boilermakers just will not go away easy, and we've got a shaken up Trojan as well. Tyra Ariel is, is getting some medical attention. Looks like it's a hand, a hand issue for Ariel now. Might be a, a jammed finger situation there. There's, there's been some hard hit balls here this evening. It looks like she's gripping that right hand. Of course, Ariel's got that heavy brace on her left knee as well, so. Well, and, and speaking of, of coming in a little banged up, the Trojans come into the game tonight a little bit banged up as there are five players that either aren't playing or didn't make the road trip here. And some big names that they're missing. One being Leah Ford, the redshirt freshman middle block. They're also missing the size with Ford at 6'4". Ford was third in the Big Ten Conference in hit percentage at 373. And so that's a, that's a big loss if you're USC coming in. Welcome back inside Holloway Gymnasium. Heating up here in set number two, 24 all. As the Boilermakers tied this one up after an injury timeout taken by Brad Keller to give Tyra Ariel some time. It looked like a, a jammed finger. It looks like Ariel is going to come back into this matchup. Yeah, she got, uh, she got her finger wrapped up, it looks like, and now she will Sub back in. We, we saw an injury on the Boilermakers side and the senior Raven Colvin rubbing some dirt on it and getting back in the game. And now we see this with the Trojans. 
and Ariel doing the same. And again, it just tells you how important this game means to both of these teams. Who wants it more? 24 all here in set two. Finally get the ready for play. Everyone on edge. McAleer sends it away to Batenhorse. Batenhorse finds the floor. Gonna, gonna call it out of bounds, Craig, and I think it landed out of bounds. We'll see if we get a challenge on a touch. It was kind of a late call from the up official, but uh, we will now get a challenge from the Trojans. Well, and the net official originally pointed at USC and then was convinced to change her mind. So 25-24 now Purdue as they get the point. Set number two. Set up and finish. Tuaninga with the assist. And Ariel finds the floor. Has to feel good for Ariel. Who was injured a couple of plays before to come in and get that kill to tie this one back up at 25. I also love the choice by Tuaninga to go quick to the middle. Myers on the slide and the finish. Myers with her third kill of the matchup. And the Boilers see set point for the second time here in set number two. Great slide attack to the, to the middle. Mortis Myers, she goes wide. And then back cross court. Chloe Shacoin back to serve for Purdue who sees set point. Purdue down, at, down five at one point in time coming all the way back here in set two. To Aninga, again, to Aninga, to Ariel, able to finish, and we're tied at 26. Again, that, uh, that quick attack to the middle gets there before the block can get into effect. You see the Boilermakers, Taylor Anderson tried to get there. Myers was going a different direction. Set for Hudson. To Aninga keeps it alive. Joust at the net, won by the Trojans. Back to Hudson. Somehow kept alive at the front of the net. Sailed long by Famuina. And now for the third time, the Purdue Boilermakers see set point in set number two. Have not seen a lot of mistakes from Famuina here tonight. That was a rough one. Feel bad for her. She'd love to have that one back. Yeah, we've seen her attack right at the middle with all of her swings here tonight. And that one tried to Dick Hugh with it, and it sailed long. So 27-26, Hornung sends it away for the Boilers. Eva Hudson! Net violation and called it. on Hudson. A net violation. Confused everyone in the building, including the broadcaster. Good the call. Right, the right call was made. We're tied at 27 now. What a great look at it from our crew there. Ariel sends it away. Colvin on the slide and the finish. Colvin with her 10th kill of the matchup. 28-27 now. Boilers have two hitters in double digit kills with Hudson and Colvin. Colvin, though, hitting an electric 6.43 to go along with five blocks. Set point number four. Anderson sends it away. To Aninga to the net. Batenhorse. Kept alive. Shacoin. Hudson somehow keeps it alive. Back to Hudson from Shacoin. And kill number 13. And set number two. Spoilers lead the Trojans 2-0. Hudson keeps it alive, just barely punching it up, and then again, clears the block. There's nothing supporting the block there. Big point, big set win for the Boilers. This season in Los Angeles against the Iowa Hawkeyes, that game also on Big Ten Plus. Corey, as we get ready to get underway here, the sandstorm blaring in the background as the block party Fired up here, Purdue leading 2 0. What do the USC Trojans need to do to try to climb back into this one? A, a position the Trojans have never been in here in West Lafayette. Yeah, down two sets and uh, staring defeat in the face. Uh, they've just got to finish. They've, they've been leading both matches in the 20s, or both sets in the 20s. They can do this here tonight. They're as good as Purdue. They've just got to finish. Starting things off on the right foot, Famwina with her ninth kill of the matchup. 
USC leading 1-0 and kind of answering our question for ourselves there, that USC seemed to go away from Famwina. They had a really nice setup with Famwina and Batenhorst and then kind of went away from her. And that's when the Boilers started to come back in set number two. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Famwina was hot in set one. Batenhorst was, was on fire early in set two and then they went away from both of them. Uh, just got to do what you do and, and you'll be fine. That last kill from Lourdes Myers. Myers with four kills now. Hitting just above 100. Nice dig there from the freshman McAleer. And that is the finisher from Famwina. Famwina the first two kills of set number three for the Trojans. Now in double digits, 10 kills, four digs and two blocks for Famwina. Seems to be the, the answer for the Trojans here. Played awkwardly by the Boilers. Shakoin out of the back row. Kept alive by the libero, a joust at the net. McAleer keeps it up to Hudson. Nice job by the libero, keeping that one up again. And if some is good, more is better. Famwina, three kills on three swings here in set number three. Just an easy set at the net, and the Boilers, not enough hands in the sky, and Famwina finding the floor. 11 kills now for her and Batenhorst. Seems like Coach Keller and his coaching staff were talking about the same thing during the break that we were, getting Famwina back involved in this match. And then that opens the door as favor on Yanwu. She puts one down, her fifth of the matchup. And kind of the same thing we saw in sets one and two. USC, you know, off the blocks early on in the set. We'll see if they can continue that here in the midst of a 3-0 scoring run. Hudson tooling that one off the block. And Eva Hudson gets her 14th kill of the matchup, four to two now. On that point, Craig, I was talking with Purdue coach Dave Shondell. I said earlier this season, it seems like your team is winning a lot of matches late. Is it me or is that a thing? And he said, you know, honestly, the, the mentality of this team might be tougher than any I've ever had here. They refuse to lose. And they'll get into a situation where they're down 22-20 or they're down 23-19 and they're just not going to go away easy. It's like the fuel that Purdue needs is, is to be down enough to get, you know, motivated enough to start playing up to their abilities. Well, we've seen it work for them in sets one and two. Down by three here in set three. See how this plays out. Greg Gosnell back to serve. Set to Hudson. And that's gonna be Eva Hudson's 15th kill of the matchup. He helps the Boilers cut the Trojan lead to two. And to kind of touch on your point with you know the Boilers waking up in, in late late match situations, Eva Hudson's the same way. It's like a the Black Mamba. She like sees the finish line and plays at a different level, a higher level as Hudson out of the back row, stuffed at the net. Batenhorst a part of that seventh block of the matchup for the Trojans. They lead by three. Sort of telegraph that one a little bit, coming, uh, flying out of the back. They saw it the whole way. Nice job by the USC defense. Gala Trubint back to serve. 19 assists tonight for Trubint. Colvin with the finish. 11th kill in the matchup for Raven Colvin, 6 4 USC. Just another level for Colvin. These are far above her season averages for kills. 11 through two, two plus sets. Sophomore service from Julia Kane. Windermere, Florida native. That one is sent back into the lap of the Boilermakers. Seven to four for USC. Each subs in after the kill from Ariel. 
Ariel with five kills, two digs, and two blocks. Played off of Shacoin. To Ininga does a nice job there to keep that one alive. But so does the Boilermakers, Libero. Anderson back to Shacoin. And that one is stuffed back into the lap of the Boilermakers, 8-4. Tyra Ariel coming up big for the Trojans here in set three. Ariel and Peach and uh, Ariel, that, that was a, an absolute roof right there. Ariel injured in set number two, has not shown the injury whatsoever here in set three. That one is called out out of the hands of Ketta Woolard. Now, Woolard, Woolard immediately looked to her head coach and said uh, there was a touch there. He thought about challenging it, but elects not to. So instead, Dave Shondell decides to take a timeout. The Purdue Boilermaker is down by five here in set number three. We'll set away for 60 seconds here on Big Ten Plus. It's 18 of the country's most iconic universities. It's Defend the Rock, Jump Around, and the biggest bass drum on earth, Big. It's a stadium so big. They had the name at the Big House. Go Blue. It's Dotting the I, Big. Let's go, Buzz. It's all-time leading scorer, Big. And now that USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington have joined the party, it's feeling real big. Right, Matt? I'm ready. Fight on. Boys up, baby. Let's get it. Go, dog. Nah, it's all about the O. The Big Ten Network. This is Big. Myers finds the range, her first fifth kill of the matchup. The Boilers down by four. Out of her hand, that ball looked like it was going long. It dropped in on the line. Perfectly weighted swing there by Myers. Yeah, that was the old changeup for Myers there out of the middle. Ryan McAleer serves it away. That ball looked like it might have been out. It but was. Gosnell keeps it in. Free ball for the Boilers. Anderson to Myers to Batenhorse. And Hudson's not able to keep that one up, and Allie Batenhorse with her 12th kill of the matchup. Some big hitters on the floor here this evening. You saw one there in Allie Batenhorse. Yeah, she's, uh, she's starting to get more involved for USC. That leads to good things. 35 attempts tonight for the grad transfer. Hudson out of the middle. Eva Hudson finds the range, 16th kill of the matchup. Boilers still down by four, but Boilers need to get Hudson, Shacoin, or Colvin going here in set three. Good back row swing, splits the block there. It was a bit late from Peach. To Ininga. Stuffed by the Boiler block. Otis Myers coming up bigger, sixth kill of the matchup. Tuaninga took that ball on a dead sprint, which cuts down on the option. She basically had one. Go straight up and see if Famuina can do anything with it. The Purdue defense noticed. Five kills for Lourdes Myers, nine for the Boilermakers as a team. That one was into the tape, out of the hands of Ariel. Point Purdue as they Continue to cut into the lead here, the Trojans. Pretty good response out of that timeout, I'd say. Dave Shondell in his 22nd season, he's learned a thing or two over the last couple of years. Boilermakers seem motivated out of that timeout. We'll see two in a row here. Now, comeback was stopped quickly by Adanya from Wiena. She puts down her 12th kill of the matchup. Great effort there by Famuina. Anyanwu to serve. Boilers smartly let that one go. The fourth service error of the matchup for the Trojans. Once again, it was a late choice there by Ryan McAleer to let that go, and this time it bears it out in her favor. Yeah, that's a freshman back there. Uh, that's one of those decisions you <laughs> pray. Do I make it? Do I not? You make that choice and then pray that you're right. 
Amwina again, but Shaquoin's able to keep it up out of the back row. A joust at the net. One by Eva Hudson. 17th kill of the night for Hudson. Boilers once down by four, now only see themselves down by one. Early in the set, you don't have to get all four or five points back. You've got to get a couple here and there, and, and Purdue's gone on three in a row, now two in a row, and now they're nearly back even. A one-handed set from Tuininga, and Famwina tried to take it, takes them off of it as well, and that one sailed wide, so tied at 11. A couple of questionable choices there by the Trojans. Maybe getting a little too cute with their placement. Hornung on the serve. And that's going to be point USC. Dave Chandel and the faithful here in West Lafayette are looking for the carry, but a, a dunk from favor on Yanru. Yeah, you're allowed to hit the ball over. You're not allowed to grab the ball and throw it over, and that's what Chandel's arguing. Uh, I, it was borderline. It wasn't a lift to me. On Yanru, right on the edge there. So that one sails a little bit long. Another service error for the Trojans. In basketball, there's a term. There's a term that says uh, the ball don't lie. I'm guessing that ran through Coach Shondell's head just now. Thinking about karma, right? Yeah, right. But Taylor Anderson back to serve as we're tied at 12. To Aninga. Shakoin keeps it alive. Hornung into the table. Not able to get there in time, but some effort being laid on the floor here tonight in West Lafayette. USC gets the point, but you see here a couple of Boilermakers doing all they can to try to keep that one up. Tell you what, I'm, I'm counting bodies that are upright and on the floor right now to make sure everybody got up off the, off the ground. That, that was selling out. Just tells you the importance of this matchup, this game, this win. Important to that person right there, Raven Colvin with the finish. Tying us up here at 13. And when Colvin starts swinging like that, get out of the way. Hudson to serve. Nice job by Anderson to keep it alive. A joust at the net. A free ball for Purdue to Shacoin. And that one is true. Chloe Shacoin with her sixth kill of the matchup. Boilers now lead by one. I love the choice there by Taylor Anderson to go wide. Everything was looking like middle. The defense thought so as well. It had been a couple straight balls to Colvin. And instead, it's Shacoin cross court kill. Boilermakers hitting 272 as a team tonight, siding out at 68%. Lead by one. Tuninga back to Batenhorst, and Colvin has her number. Again, Batenhorst. Batenhorst able to finish that one off her 13th kill of the matchup. Allie Batenhorst too good. You keep going back to the well, she's gonna find a way. Man, she just kept reloading too. Okay, that one didn't work. Okay, let's try something else. All right, let's do this again. I get tired of jumping. 14-14. Off the tape, Colvin. And that's 13 now for Raven Colvin and gives the Boilers a one point advantage. What a senior night performance for the senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, and Raven Colvin. Just the slightest of touches there at the net of the block attempt as Julia Kane comes back in to serve for Purdue. Yeah, 13 kills hitting 579 with five blocks. Colvin wants it. Julia Kane back in to serve. Joust at the net. Hudson keeps it up. Anderson tapped over and kept alive, but it's gonna get out of play. Six kills now for Lourdes Myers as she was able to finish that one off and give the Boilers a two-point lead. Smart play by Myers, you see there, just giving a little bit of air, get under the block. Pancake dig was made there by Trubent, but uh, second contact wasn't good. Well, it's awareness, too, instead of going into the block, going over the block, and it pays off. 
and Julia Kane gets a service ace to give the Boilers a three-point advantage. Only the, the fourth service ace of the night for the Purdue Boilermakers, and that's gonna draw a timeout from Brad Keller. As we will step away for 60 seconds here in set three on Big Ten Plus. 3-0 scoring run. The service ace from Julia Kane. Brad Keller called the timeout, but exchanging a, a service ace for a service error, and USC will get the ball back after the timeout, 17-15. One of the reasons you take a timeout is to throw a good server out of rhythm, and that worked that time on uh, Julia King. Nia to Aninga back to serve. That high toss serve. Almost found the range there, but Hudson keeps it up. Smart play there from Kenna Woolard as she tools that one off the block of the Trojans. 18-15 now as the Boilers inch closer to 20. Woolard hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities here tonight running that uh, right side attack or the opposite attack for Purdue, but uh, pays that one off. McAleer sends that one away. A huge block attempt at the net. Hudson tries to dive for that one as it looked like it was going to sail long, but point USC 18-16 now. <laughs> Allie Batenhorst to serve. A good game for Batenhorst tonight. 13 kills on eight digs. Anderson tried to go sneaky. USC had it played that time as that sails long out of the hands of Famuina. 19-16 now, and Famuina is cooled off here in set number three. That's the first attack for Kayla Anderson that didn't work tonight. She's now four for five. Boilers play it off the top of the block. Back to Hudson, she taps it over. Anderson to Myers on the slide. Kept alive by Ariel. That one is kept up. But Hudson sails that one long. 1917 now. A couple of nice plays by the Liberos. Tightening up here in set number three, USC in a must win situation. Down to nothing. Myers on the slide, and that one is good. Lotus Myers finishing it at the net, and the Boilers are the first of 20. Myers with her sixth kill of the matchup. Let's see what kind of resolve USC has now that they're down three in the 20s. They can fight back like we've seen Purdue to tonight. That's Baten one good way to do it. Batenhorst with the hammer, her 14th kill of the matchup. Brings USC within two. I mean, there I, again, they ran that, that back attack with some, some deception up front. And, and if I'm Brad Keller, it's it's Famuina and it's Batenhorst until this, this, game, this set is over with. Set from Anderson, Colvin off the tape. That one doesn't get over, so four hits from the Boilermakers and the Trojans are within one. 20 to 19. The faithful here at Holloway start to come alive for their Purdue Boilermakers. Bait and horse down the middle. The Boilers keep it up. Colvin. USC keeps it up. Anderson. Back and forth. Hudson off the top of the block. Famuina keeps it up. Tapped over. Anderson keeps it alive. Hornon. Eva Hudson. 18th kill of the matchup for Hudson. Gives the Boilers a two point advantage. You know, Craig, you, you get a top 20 matchup like this, top 25 matchup. 
you imagine that it could be something like a second week in the NCAA tournament type of a type of a showdown. That's exactly what we're getting here tonight. Yeah, we are definitely getting our money's worth here this evening on Big Ten Plus. Keno Willard and Raven Colvin. The block at the net. The tenth block of the evening for the Purdue Boilermakers. And Colvin's been in on six of them. 22-19, the Boilers lead by three. Brad Keller calls a timeout as it's do or die for the Trojans here on Big Ten Plus. Baker in program history, pretty cool. Back to you guys. Yeah, thank you, Ashlyn. And here on Senior Night, a great way to highlight a great senior for the Purdue Boilermakers and Ali Hornung. Boilers see themselves three points away from the three set sweep of the Trojans. And out of the timeout, a service ace for Taylor Anderson. It's now 23 19. Out of the last time out, uh, USC was able to get a service error out of Julia Kane. Out of this time out, it's an ace from Taylor Anderson. That's just kind of how things are going right now for the Boilermakers, up four, two points away. Want to also mention the USC Trojans have only lost one time ever in the state of Indiana. They are six. They are six and zero versus the Purdue Boilermakers. The Boilers are seeking their first victory over the Trojans all time. 23-19. Batenhorse stopped at the net from who else? Raven Colvin. Her seventh block of the matchup. And now the Boilermakers see set point in set number three and match point. Anderson to send it away. Shacoin keeps it up. Too much on that one is, that one is off the hands of the Boilermaker and out of play 24-20. 14th kill of the night for Falmina. Yeah, Danya Falmina's had an incredible evening. 14 kills hitting 200 with two blocks. Sent away, Boilers keep it up. Colvin on the slide! And how, what a better way to end this one on...
சரி ரொம்ப சிரிக்காத அபு வேடு வெக்கமே எல்லாமே என்கிட்ட வந்து கில் எடுக்கிற பத்தியா ஆமா பக்கத்துலதான் ஆடுவோம் இவ்வளவு 